Hello, today we're going to talk about PDO, and we're going to wrap up with a few other unrelated functions, uh, notably password verify and email. What does this have to do with PDO? Nothing. But uh, that's the nature of the course, is I'm trying to build an overall set of skills, get you to certain points, uh, expose you to new techniques, and... Uh, Sometimes they don't always fit together. So this is PDO week, and it's it's a cool week because PDO is a big deal, and it's and it's interesting. Uh, but before I get too excited about that, I want to make clear the idea that you don't have to use PDO on your final project. I you have to use PDO this week, and by extension, you're going to have to deal with it a few other times. But it's while it is cool, and I think you should know about PDO. You are experts at MySQLi, and if you want to use that going forward, then go ahead. You'll see when I'm teaching this, I do reference the way you already know versus what this is. I'm trying to show you that they're not all that different in some ways, uh, but they are a little different. And ultimately, you should use what you're most comfortable with. So uh, you are going to do a lab this week and an assignment. There's things in this lecture that you're going to need for that assignment. The lab's going to give you more practice with PDO. I also have YouTube videos on all the specific things. So I'm going to blow through some things because there's kind of a ton of content in this lecture. And I'm not trying to make it any longer than I have to. That being said, I am going to do some PDO examples in here. And I usually try not to do that. I try and separate the lecture from the examples and the practice. Uh, but because PDO's different enough and potentially useful enough and cool enough, I'm going to do some of those examples in this in this lecture, which is going to make it a little long, but I'm also going to ref, re, refer you to the uh, to the YouTube videos at times. And also, there's things like the Connect script that you're going to do in the lab. All right. So, without further ado, what is PDO? PDO stands for PHP Data Objects. It's an object-oriented alternative to MySQLi. MySQLi is that thing you're familiar with. Everything's a function call there. It's MySQLi underscore name of the function. Uh, here, we're going to be using PDO objects, and we're going to be using functions, but right since those functions are members of an object, then we call them methods. Uh, so some of the general upside to this, there's, a, there's already a YouTube video saying why this is good, but... Uh, data access layer, this means that uh, what you do is going to be portable, which means that if you ever have to switch the underlying database, it's as simple as switching your Connect script. Uh, as opposed to MySQLi, or as you can imagine, if you went to Oracle, that MySQLi function doesn't work for Oracle. You'd have to change all your function calls, whereas in PDO, all we have to do is change the uh, driver in our Connect script to port it to another platform. That is good. Uh, so we specify the, the driver for our database. That's the first thing in our Connect script. And another thing that's cool about PDO is it, it supports prepared statements. Prepared statements are your best defense against MySQL injection attacks. And if you remember, or learned and remember, from uh, what we've previously talked about, preventing against SQL injection attacks is a, it's a hoop you got to jump through. And uh, we're going to have to jump through hoops to do that with prepared statements too. But... But uh, at least we're going to be defending against them the best we can. Uh, prepared statements are generally efficient, more efficient than their non-prepared counterparts. And uh, they are a more recent innovation. So if you're using an older platform, <coughs> sorry about that, uh, then uh, you might not have access to these. PHP 5 has been around for quite a while, but you'd be surprised at how many sites are out there and exist on older platforms. All right, so that's the quick sales pitch. I do encourage you to watch the uh, video, which also has these slides in it. So what you're used to is this stuff, right? MySQLi something, MySQLi something. Here, what we do is we create an object of type PDO, and we call methods. And the methods have similar names to the functions. Uh, but you see that arrow operator. And at this point, maybe you, got, maybe you have a little bit more appreciation for the object-oriented syntax that we covered last week, because now you'll have some idea of what the heck you're doing. So some, th some things are very similar. Some things are more different. Prepared statements are kind of a beast of their own. All right, so this is similar. I threw the same slide at you, I think, with MySQLi. There's five steps to working with the database. One is getting connected. This is the most difficult step, and there's a video on this. And so this is actually my second attempt at this video. Uh, because I had some problems and it was just going to take forever. So I figured I'm not going to do the connect script in this one. 
I'm going to ref, refer you to the video on it, which I'm sure is pretty decent. And uh, I'm also going to just rely on the fact that you have to create a Connect script in your lab. So I'm just going to show you it. This is actually the hard part, I guess. If you remember getting connected to MySQLi was difficult too. The difficult thing is getting those credentials right. It's not that calling a function is that difficult. It's that entering the information correctly is the difficult part. The thing that I want to mention first and foremost about this is that the database that you connect to is the same database that you would connect to every other time. Do not create a new database for this. Well, I mean, you certainly could create a new database for this course, but it's not a PDO database. It's just a MySQL database. The way that you connect to it is up to you, and we're talking about a way you connect to it. So if you find yourself creating a new user with a new password, oh my gosh, you're doing it super wrong. You are making it very hard, and you're going to make a bunch of mistakes for yourself, so don't do that. Uh, you really should be ideally just copying and pasting the name of your database, your username and your password straight from your old connection script, which I can tell you works, to this one. It's just a different way of connecting, but it's the same credentials. This is not a PDO database. It's just a PDO connection to that database. Uh, so anyways, that's where people are most likely to get hung up because you just will. Everyone gets hung up when they create connect scripts. It happens. It even happened to me. Uh, on my draft one of this video. And then we got the queries, right? That's our interaction with the database. That's the thing that people, I don't know, I think that's the exciting part. Using the data, that's going to be if we selected some rows. Let's do something with those rows. And then the last thing is release data, close connection. These are related to managing those connections and resources. I'm not going to spend much time on those, just like I did in MySQLi. If you had a big site with a lot of traffic, these things would matter. But if we're just messing around, these things get released, you know, at the end of the script. Uh, we should, you know, best practices would be to manage those things, but I'm probably not going to spend much time talking about it because I'm going to struggle to get this done in under an hour anyways. Last week's video was over an hour and it pretty much destroyed my computer. It was like everything short of flames and smoke shooting out of it. Like it took hours to make the video. So that's like a big priority for me is don't do that just for my convenience and yours. All right. So connecting. So connecting in PDO is, uh, I don't know, similar, I guess. So this right here is a variable. I'm going to call it PDO. Sometimes people call it STH. STH stands for statement handler. Sometimes people call it handler. Uh, you could call it DBC. I don't know. You, I've seen it before. It's just, that's kind of confusing, I guess. So I probably am not going to do that. Anyways, name your variable. New means we're calling a constructor uh, for the class PDO. So in other words, we're instantiating an object of type PDO and its name is STH or whatever it is. And then just this big thing right here. Those things that you are going to mess up are going to be your username, your password, and the name of your database. Why will you mess those up? Well, I hope you don't, but I've just seen people mess them up a million times, so you might. I would recommend copying and pasting those from your old Connect script. No need to reinvent the wheel. Do not create a new database with a new user just because you think you need one for PDO. If you want to make a new database, great, do that. But uh, it doesn't have anything to do with PDO. This right here is where you specify that driver. And so the, the difficult thing to see here is that this is one big string. And then there's colons, semicolons, and equal signs in here. I wouldn't put any spaces in there. I feel like you can get in some trouble. Uh, all right. So let me go a few more steps, and then we'll, then we'll look at a practical example. I also linked a practical example in the description of this video, I guess you could say. Well, in Blackboard I did. You can follow along there if you want to. I don't like to do examples in the lectures because these lectures are already long, and I, that's why we do labs, and that's why I do YouTube videos. But I think PDO is cool enough, and I think, it's, I think there's some value in me doing some examples, so I will do some examples in this lecture today. All right, so that's basically what your Connect looks like. but. As you'll see when you look at the resources for the week, other than this, uh, you pretty much have to implement try catch blocks with your Connect script. So try catch blocks are a way of handling and managing errors. So the error would be that this right, the username, password don't exist, database name is wrong, there's a typo or something. If you don't use try catch blocks, the default behavior is a stack trace, and it just shows username, password, and a bunch of stuff that you wouldn't want to see. 
So the general idea is like uh, you take the code, which you think might throw an exception. You wrap it, wrap it in a try. After that, you have a catch. Catch is where you're looking for a certain kind of errors. And so what these allow you to do is you, the programmer, to define what happens when something goes wrong as opposed to just relying on what happens naturally. Because in the uh, case of a connect script, what happens naturally is certainly not what you would want to happen. I hate to introduce try catch blocks at the same time where I'm introducing another key concept, but we kind of have to do them. So try, that's where you specify the part of the code which might generate the error. Catch is where you handle the exception. You can have multiple catch blocks looking for different kinds of exceptions. And then a finally, uh, you're probably not going to use a lot of these, but a finally, it's easily it's easy to compare it to an else because it comes last in like a kind of a decision-ish structure looking thing, but it's not the same as an else. An else only gets executed if nothing else happens. A finally block will happen regardless of whether there was an exception or not. Here's an example. So we're going to do a connect, which is, you know, a beast of its own. And I would highly recommend just write that line and then go wrap it in a try catch block later. And then the other thing we need to do is turn on debugging information. So by default, PDO doesn't display any errors ever. So if you do a totally messed up SQL statement, you are not going to know whether it worked, whether it didn't work. It's not going to display any information. So I'm saying you need to turn on error reporting. So this little magic line right here is something you want to include with your connect script. That being said, let me show you my connect script for that file down below that you don't need to do, but you can. So here's, this is a connect script. Now you're also going to create one of these in the lab and uh, I have a YouTube video on it. To be clear, there should be one connect script that ever exists. It should not be here. You should have a require, right? Do a good job, write this, make sure it works, put it in a secure folder and then require it. All right, so it looks like this. I'm calling it PDO today. There's my driver, host, local host, DB name, whatever the name of your database is. I'm doing the cheesy one off my local XAMPP installation. Yours is going to be far more complicated because it's going to have an underscore in it and some reference to your name. You do, you do not have to specify the character set, but you should. There's your username. There's your password. It should be clear that I'm doing this locally in XAMPP. You should do this. Well, you should your your XAMPP should be configured the way it is on your web server. But you know, when I'm putting these examples on the internet, you betcha I'm going to be doing root with no password. I have no reason. To, I mean, I like this because I can show you my credentials, and they're also meaningless. So, but yours should be better than that. There's a uh, there's your uh, connect script. A lot of explanation of it in other resources. All right, so the interesting parts now executing a query. So in the world of MySQL, when you want to execute a query, you write something like that. In the world of PDO, it's something like this. So STH, that's the name of that database connection that you have. You notice it's pretty similar. We're still storing the result in something called result. Um, that's kind of sort of a reference to my connect script like that. That's a reference to my SQL like that. This is no more difficult. Now notice that this is a uh, this SQL has no variables in it, so we're not worried about a SQL injection attack here. When we start having to worry about SQL injection attacks, is not as easy. But for here, uh, you know, a static query like that, pretty easy. It's just different. Welcome to the world of prepared statements. So prepared statements are your best defense against SQL injection attacks. They are also efficient. The reason they're efficient is basically what you do is you, you take your SQL and the SQL gets processed like into a general template. And it's just like it doesn't have to be compiled over and over again. It's just you, you create this this statement and you just drop the variables into it. So there's no threat of someone doing something like dropping a backtick into it because the query already has a shape defined. Users cannot change the shape of it with a backtick or a semicolon or an and. Uh, you know, the, the query is already built and it's just waiting for the variables. So if you want to use prepared statements, you uh, first thing you do is you call this prepare function. So prepare it, build up the, the template query, and then you bind params. That is when you drop in the variables into that template and then you execute it. Right here, we didn't do those things, but you'll see in a minute. Next two slides are about prepared statements. So in MySQLi, when you do a query with variables, you do that. 
and we understand that you could get in trouble if someone enters a backtick for ID or don't, right? Something with apostrophe in it because it'll bust the shape of the query. And the way we protected against that was with MySQLi real escape string, and that was no fun. Uh, so in the world of prepared statements, we do it like this. So here's our SQL. And notice that rather than referencing variables in here, we drop we drop literal question marks in there. So you, the programmer, are building a query of a specific shape, and you are saying exactly where the variables are going to go in it. There's no, no one can change the shape of this. So I like this, actually. So we're not so worried about what goes there, just that something goes there. Now, the interesting thing is there are, and this is what you call preparing the statement, Binding the parameters is probably the hard part. There's three ways you can bind the parameters. This is one way to bind the parameters. So we have that result, which we created here. We call the execute method. And now, so right here, this is how you would bind multiple parameters in one shot. I do it like this when I'm actually programming on my own, but it's a poor example because you're, what this really is here is you're creating an array uh, like a temporary little array and you're passing it to this execute function that right there would bind two parameters or that'd be the first spot that'd be the second spot I'm telling you this exists if you want to do it fine but the way I'm gonna do it is like this same query I prepare it the same way but instead I say bind param in the first spot I want to bind something called name and then again in the second spot I want to put something called value this is pretty easy to see. One corresponds to the first, two corresponds to the second. There's my name. That's the first variable. That's the second variable. The only problem with this is it's pretty uh, it's pretty lengthy, right? That's three lines instead of one. The trade-off is it's easier to read, but you can kind of see what's happening here. So there's this execute function, which actually executes the query. And rather than do bind param, bind param, we're just creating an array and passing that. This is the way I'm going to do it because it's the easiest to read. It's tedious to write, but it's not that big of a deal. The other way you can do it is you can name those spots. So colon and then a name, colon and then a name. And you bind params just the same. And you say, hey, in that, that spot, I want to do that variable. In that spot, I want to do that variable. I'd rather just stitch the, the, the question marks in there and just reference them by their, their index position. So you got three ways of doing it, which is kind of tricky, I guess. I'm going to stick to this one because I don't mind writing too much when you're learning something. You know, I'm not worried about the most efficient way to do it when I'm introducing it. And, uh, you know, I don't mind this. I really don't. All right, so before I actually get to an example, I need to show you how to use results. So, so far we've talked about connecting. We've talked about querying. Sometimes you're going to want to process those results that you get back, right? So see that, what do those rows look like? So we got two general methods of fetching the data. It's it's definitely analogous to how it worked in MySQLi. It's just different set of functions or methods in this case. You can do if you do fetch, that's going to fetch a single row for you. And so rather than like, and so you can fetch an associative array, you can fetch an indexed array, which is dumb, or you can fetch both. Now that is how it was in MySQLi too. If you think about it, it was MySQLi fetch a scoff. Right, I mean, you, you wrote that a lot. That's generally what we do. Here we call the fetch function, and it's I think it's painful that uh, we pass it an argument, and it's this thing right here, which is not so cool to write, but it is what it is. This right here will fetch a row at a time. When we do this generally, this is the uh, condition in a while loop, and you know how this works. Uh, when you call this function, it evaluates the true and creates a row and the loop executes if there's more rows. And at the point where it runs out of rows, this thing evaluates the false and, and our loop breaks. So that's how you iterate over a big array of results. The other way you can do it is by calling this fetch all function. If you call fetch all, what it'll do is it'll grab all of the results and it'll be in the form of a giant array. So you can grab them one row at a time. That's going to go with a while loop. Or you can grab all the results and you can for each your way through them. And so now, you know, we talked about for eaches a couple weeks ago. And you remember how those were pretty convenient to use? Well, that might be a way you want to do it. But hey, there was nothing wrong with doing a while loop with this uh, assignment statement as its condition either. That said, let's go do some examples. And by let's, I mean we. All right, so 
the first thing you'll notice about this, if you looked at it, you don't have to look at it, is I've made functions out of everything. You can see I'm trying to sort of emphasize some of those ideas that we've covered in the last couple weeks. It does make this thing more difficult to understand, and this is a weird set of examples, but eh, I don't feel too bad about it. Just showing you different ways to structure your program, and I think that's a good thing. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write uh, some uh, PDO, prepared statements, for a, for, a, for a query. Now this one uses a like. I'm going to tell you right now that likes are super weird in the world of uh, prepared statements. And we'll have to deal with that in a minute here. So if I want to do a query, starts just how it always starts. i got to write the SQL. All right, so it's going to be select star from my table is called books practice. Big fan of copying and pasting here because you didn't make the table and you want to make sure that you get things right. Where uh, name like. All right. So what you're thinking, I'm sure, is that. If you're thinking anything, you're thinking that, right? Because that's where my variable goes. Telling you right now that's not going to work very well, but we'll deal with that in a minute. All right, so uh, result equals name of my database handler, which I think I called it PDO or something. I did. PDO, uh, I want to prepare, which means I'm going to be doing some SQL with a variable in it. And I'm preparing the SQL. So far, not so bad. I mean, except for spelling that as prepare, which sounds OK, I guess. It just doesn't look right. All right, so that's how I prepare my statement. And the next thing I got to do is bind those parameters. And so this can go a little wrong. I have a tendency to go equals because I'm used to doing things the other way. But what you're actually doing is this result. You're going to call a method, and it's called a bind param. And I want to bind something in spot one, so whatever corresponds to the first question mark. And that thing that I want to pass it is called title. And at this point, I'm going to try and make this thing work. And I don't think it will. Oh, actually, I got to search, right? D. Uh, huh. I'm just trying to figure out how it's working. I kind of expected it to blow up. Oh, I haven't executed it. Yeah, that's my problem. Because it's going to blow up. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. All right, so to be clear, all right, I blew up. It says something about stuff. Who cares? I'll talk about it in a minute. Uh, so first of, all, first of all, I want you to understand that if you didn't have that on, I wouldn't even get an exception. It just would not work, and I would have no idea why. But because I turned that on, I do get an exception. And da 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 near this, right? So do you see what's kind of dumping some things? Do you see what that looks like? It's like, what in the heck is that? There's like back ticks inside of the prints, percent signs. So what you have to do, actually, is those percent signs don't go there. They go here, which is weird. At this point, it's, it's kind of terrible that my first example is of an exceptional circumstance. This isn't going to work either. Can't pass by a reference. So what that means is I actually need to build up the string before I pass it. So what I actually need to do is, is manually create the string right here, like that. This I am allowed to do. And then oh my God, I, uh, I do that. So we were not allowed. So what I just showed you is we're not allowed to do percent signs up in here. And uh, we're not allowed to manipulate this variable in the context of this function. But we can do it like that. And that is going to work the way we want it to. Uh, a. Oh, yeah. I'm All right. So it didn't explode, which is some kind of a positive. The other thing I did is I, is I want to call this function called show books to show the results. Here's show books. Show books expects to be pay, passed uh, an array of values. So remember, there's two ways we can fetch. We can fetch them all in one big array, or we can fetch them one row at a time. 
This is meant to fetch them uh, all at once. So I'm going to call that. It, oh, I already forgot what it's called. Show books. I know it seems like uh, this has been going for quite a while. We're not getting close to the end. Yeah, we're actually pretty close to the end. And what I want to pass it is uh, results. And we're going to do that fetch all beast. That will grab everything in one big array and pass it to that function. And that function is meant to just, it's it's hacky. It just does pre-tags and then the whole thing. You'll see how it works. And, ugh, 61. I don't know what I did. Result, result. There you go. That's everything with an A in it. It's just a debugging function. It seems like it works. So I just showed you that likes are difficult. And this little lesson here, oh, I don't know. That's not that's nonsense. This is not a legitimate way to display your results anyways. You should be iterating through that. I know you know how to iterate through results and display a table because I've seen you do it many times. There's no way you're, you've are you come this far and, and haven't done that before. So I'm not too worried about it. I'm just trying to do something quick and dirty. All right, let's do an insert now. Like I said, I don't like doing these examples because it makes these things long, but I think this is one of those few times where it makes some sense. All right, so we're doing an insert. Insert into books practice. Names of my fields, values, and uh, val use. Did I just, what? Val use. This one's kind of easy. There's three things I'm going to dump. It's going to be question mark, question mark, question mark. I like that. I love it, actually. And then I just want to make sure I get my fields right. It's name, genre, pages. I think writing the SQL is easier here because we don't have to worry so much about that and back ticks and such. Uh, next step, we are going to uh, prepare the statement. Oh, it's a... Uh, I can never remember what I call things. PDO, uh, prepare. And the thing we're preparing is the SQL. So far, so good. The binding's going to be a little bad, but we, you know, we'll do it. And here's where it hurts a little bit because i got to do this three times. How about um, duplicate, duplicate. One, uh, that's going to be title. Uh, two, that's going to be a genre. Three, that's going to be pages. So it's repetitive, but eh, it's not so bad. And then result, execute, and that should be my insert. Um, to be clear, um, something I'm not going to do, because I do some of it in other places, try catch blocks. You could wrap this in a try catch block. And you could wrap that in a try catch block if you wanted to handle that, uh, if you wanted to handle those exceptions. I'm just not doing it because I'm not trying to do the most thorough set of examples I can here today. Now, the other thing I'm saying is we don't know if this insert actually works. So I need to, eh, eh, all right. I said call show books. I don't want to do that because what that means is I'd have to generate another another i'd have to do this yeah i don't want to do it yeah gosh you know i want to do it but i'm not going to do it basically what i'm saying is we should have another sql statement here saying select star from books and then and then show the results but i don't want to do that i'll just we'll just we'll just test it all i want to do is make sure an insert works uh, okay stuff and more stuff it's of the garbage uh garbage with two R's, and it's got uh, two pages. I add it. Oh, gosh. 20, 78. What did I do wrong? I don't know what I did wrong. Uh, and I know what I did wrong, and I did that wrong. Uh, and now let's... Oh, gosh. I did garbage, right? So A should work. Uh, oh yeah, stuff, stuff, and more stuff. There we go, it worked. 
And so now at this point you have seen, that's the majority of the week. So we created a connect script, uh, wrapped it in a try catch, turned on error reporting, executed a couple queries. We did a couple prepared statements. And so that's why I included these. And I also linked the data files because I thought you might want to practice those things. You want to, might want to build up some, uh, some confidence in those with me kind of leading the way before you go and do too many on your own. And that's uh, just about it. Now I didn't do, the one thing I didn't do was manually loop through a set of results. That would be well, like something like instead of this print R, it'd be more like, oh, I'm just going to do pretend island. I'm not going to actually do this. It'd be like while row equals, uh, it's called rows fetch. And then one of those things like PDO, I don't know the syntax offhand. It's, it's rough. Fetch ASOC, I guess. I know, I just said I'm not doing this, and now I'm doing it. But that right there would give you a row at a time, and then you'd echo out the row uh, name or something. Uh, you know, I, I can't help myself. I feel like I'd like to show you what it looks like. And sure, that's not a well-formatted table, uh, but let's see how that goes. I didn't intend to do that, so I'm not, I don't actually have high hopes. Fetch, fetch. Remember function fetch, 26, stack trace. Uh, that doesn't work because this thing isn't a uh, PDO resource. I had to think about it for a minute. Remember what I'm, I, I already kind of, all I'm passing it is an array. So this is what it would look like if you wanted to iterate through a PDO set of results. But what we would actually be doing here is more like this. Um, it's actually a for each loop because this is an array. So I was kind of hung up on what I'm doing here. But basically, um, so I want to iterate over rows as val, I think. And I'd want to echo the val name. 30. Function for each. Oh, I didn't open that. And uh, you see it worked, it was just ridiculous. But let me, uh, so I kind of sort of gave you, intended to give you a roadmap of how to iterate over those those results because I don't particularly do that um, in any of the examples. It's in a YouTube video though, so I don't feel too terrible about butchering this whole thing here. But basically, if you're gonna do that fetch all, this is how you're gonna work your way through a set of results. What I was attempting to do in the beginning would have been what you would have done if you had a uh, like a raw result, like a result. And then if you wanted to fetch those one row at a time, that's what I started doing, but it didn't work. So I'm getting out of here. I told you I didn't want to do this. I mean, I wouldn't mind doing it if we had unlimited time, but we don't. All right, so the rest of this, so that's the end of that. So there's two more things I want to do with you. And that is show you password verify and show you how to uh, yeah, email password verify and well, three things. All right. So I'm going to have to make part two of this video. That's pretty obvious at this point. So uh, in the next video, which you won't really recognize as being next, it'll just be a continuation of this one. I'll call it part two. I will show you how to send an email. And so a couple of things to note about that, because right, I, I wish I was just lecturing and not doing examples here, is uh, the, the mail function is not going to work in XAMPP unless you configure things to work. Like, let's say that you use Gmail, you would need to set up your Gmail credentials in XAMPP. And I'm not trying to do that, but I am telling you that when you put this on the live web server, it will work. 
the other thing that you need to know is that these emails are pretty likely to get caught in a spam filter. Spam filters are meant to block automated emails and yep, this is a pretty much an automated email tool. So just because they're not working doesn't mean, just because you can't check them on your own doesn't mean it's not necessarily working. I don't like that. It's hard for you to tell whether you're making mistakes or not. Syntax is pretty easy. It's called mail. This is who it goes to. Here's the subject. Here's the message. Advanced options is a terribly complex subject. We're not going to use those. All right. So I'll do the email function. That's also part of the lab. The one thing that's not part of the lab is password verify. So this is a function which handles your salting and hashing for you. So you might be wondering, why in the heck didn't we learn this in the first place? Well, if this doesn't really do anything to build your understanding of security. Uh, it does. If, if all you ever learned is this, you might not really understand what a hash was or what it meant to apply salt to something. Uh, a lot of the issues associated with password security, they get obscured by this. This is a perfectly reasonable solution, though. What it does is basically you pass it a password and it will store in a database a single field which uh, which contains the hashing algorithm, uh, the salt, and the secured password. And it manages the retrieval and storage of those things for you. It's cool. I like it. I'm encouraging you to use it this week just because I want you to not... And so, I'm not asking you to do this not because I wanted to put one more thing on you, but because I didn't want to have to reteach you salting and hashing because you've already got your hands full with PDO. So I figured, hey, let's make things easy, easy, and I also teach you a cool trick at the same time. I will do an example of this. I am asking you to do this on your assignment, so you're going to want to reference this, and I also made a YouTube video of it. I'm trying to support you. I just feel a little bit bad that we didn't get a chance to, uh, to, to walk you through one with you while you're doing it with me, but... It's going to be okay, I think. I expect it to be okay. The one interesting point here is you re might remember that when it comes to storing a, a hashed password, you need a long column in your database, basically, because when you hash it, it becomes long. So what I've learned about this is 60 would be long enough to store this password. But in the future, this password verify function might use a different hashing algorithm. And so we should probably b make our, our fields long enough to be able to deal with potentially different hashing algorithms in the future. And so 255 is what they recommend in the documentation for that. And the last thing is a privacy statement. Now, this is something I walk you through in the lab. This is a one-time process. This is kind of like a connect script in that you should take the time in doing this once. And it's going to hurt when you do it because it's long and tedious. But a uh, privacy policy is just a, a thing that you have to create for your website one time. Um, and so we're going to sink some time into doing that right today. And you should have one of these on your final project. This is just a web page with a bunch of information, and you should use a template from somewhere. Um, in, in addition to the privacy statement page, when you are collecting the information from the people right on that register page that you're going to create, why are you why are you collecting the information? This is You should explain that. Why, why are they going to give this to you? How are you going to use it? What's beneficial to the users? And what am I not going to do with it? Basically, that means I'm not going to sell it to any third parties, something like that. People are skeptical to give out their information. It's your job to make them feel, uh, give them some kind of a, uh, a statement that, that you're not going to abuse it. And it's also your job to convince people to give it to you. I mean, just put a form on a page. Why would someone figure fill it out? I will because I'm the teacher and I have to grade it. But you're not far away from having to create things where, where it's your job to you know, convince people to use this form and, and answer those questions that they might have in advance. All right, so part two, I'm going to do yet a tiny bit more. Uh, well, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do uh, password verify, and I'm going to mash it together with some PDO. And uh, that will wrap things up. Although, at this moment, I'm sitting here wondering, uh, should I not just do that in the uh, YouTube video? because that's kind of the same thing. Answer, I'm going to do it in another part of this lecture because I want to show you two examples. So hopefully you find that helpful. I guess I don't mind feedback on that because on one hand, I'm asking you to watch something twice and I don't know that that's respectful of your time. On the other hand, I'm just trying to help, so not quite sure. But 
If you have thoughts, let me know about whether you'd just see it in the YouTube video and I give you the overview here or whether you'd rather see it twice. That being said, more often than not, I'm not going to do it twice. But since I think this is both important, kind of weird, and something I'm asking you to do, I'm going to do it twice. See you shortly in part two, which will be shorter.